Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're diving into a project that a lot of us who run home servers have probably dreamed about. Turning that always-on box humming away in the closet into a part-time powerhouse gaming rig for the living room. It all kicks off with this really simple but super tempting question. What if that same machine that's running all your network stuff and storing your files could, you know, with just a flick of a virtual switch, fire up a full-blown gaming session right on your TV? No extra console needed, no dedicated PC taking up space. So for one person who actually did this, it wasn't just some random idea. The goal was super specific and honestly pretty relatable. They wanted to play the co-op game It Takes Two with their wife. And the hardware they were working with wasn't exactly top of the line, an Intel i7-7800 and a GTX 1050 Ti, but it was definitely capable. The real puzzle was how to make it serve two masters, server during the week, gaming console on the weekend. And the secret sauce, the special ingredient that makes this whole experiment even possible, is a piece of software called Proxmox. This is the magic that lets one physical computer live multiple lives, turning a simple server into this incredibly versatile machine. See, Proxmox is what's called a virtualization platform. So what does that actually mean? Well, think of it like this. It takes one physical computer and slices it up into multiple totally independent virtual computers, or VMs. Each one of those VMs thinks it has its own hardware, which lets you do crazy stuff like run a Linux server and a Windows gaming machine on the exact same box at the exact same time. And this quote from the community just nails it. It perfectly explains why people love it so much. It's not a one-trick pony. It's this incredibly versatile tool that can handle pretty much anything you throw at it, from running tiny network services to, as we're seeing here, powering a full-on gaming experience. Okay, so you're sold on the idea. You're going to build a gaming VM. The very first big decision you have to make is what operating system you're going to run inside it. And this is where a classic, fiery debate kicks off. Do you go with the old, familiar giant, Windows, or do you try a lean, mean, open-source challenger? And the choice really boils down to this classic set of trade-offs. If you go with Windows, you get awesome game compatibility. Pretty much everything just works right out of the box. But you've got licensing costs and a bit of system bloat. On the other hand, these specialized Linux distros like Bazarite are super lightweight and fast, but you might bump into some compatibility snags or run into stubborn anti-cheat software that just won't cooperate. And man, you can really feel the passion from the community on this one. Here's a user making the case for Linux. For them, it's simple. If you're mostly playing Steam games, the benefits of a clean, open source system are way better than any potential headaches. It's all about avoiding what they call Windows crap. But then, on the other side of the fence, you've got the pragmatists. This person isn't worried about philosophy, they just want results. They're running two pretty beefy Windows VMs, and the bottom line for them is, it works very well. Guaranteed compatibility is worth the trade-off. But once you've finally picked your operating system, you come face to face with the single biggest technical monster of this whole project. This is the one step that decides if you get a buttery smooth console-like experience or a stuttering unplayable nightmare. Now first, let's talk about the elegant part, how you actually get the picture from the server to your screen. This is done with a really cool software duo. You have Sunshine running on your gaming VM, which acts as the host. Then you run the Moonlight app on your smart TV or maybe a handheld, and that's the client. And what you get is the seamless, super low latency stream that really feels like you're playing right there on the couch. But to get a game running well enough to stream it in the first place, you have to perform this delicate, kind of scary operation. You need to give your gaming VM direct, exclusive control of the physical graphics card. This is called GPU pass-through and it is absolutely the fragile heart of this entire build. I love this quote from the community because it just perfectly captures the experience. When GPU pass-through works, it is pure magic. You get almost the same performance as if it were a dedicated machine. But when it doesn't work, oh man, it's an infuriating trip down a rabbit hole of weird errors and hidden BIOS settings. It's powerful, but it is so unpredictable. So, for anyone brave enough to actually try this, the community has passed down some really valuable, hard-won wisdom. These are the little tips and tricks that people learned through hours of frustration, and they can save you a world of pain. A few of the big ones here are really critical. So, for example, there are these features like RAM ballooning and memory sharing. They sound useful for managing a server, right? But they can cause massive stuttering in a gaming VM, so you gotta turn those off. And here's a huge logistical point. 
Once you pass that GPU over to the virtual machine, the main Proxmox system, the host, can't use it anymore. So you have to be ready to manage your server from a laptop or another device. All of this, all this complexity and these potential frustrations, it brings us to a really fundamental question. Why on earth would you do all this when you could just go out and buy a PlayStation or an Xbox? And you know, one of the most charming answers that kept popping up was this, the spouse approval factor. There's a real appeal to having just one, single, invisible server that does everything, instead of adding another cluttered box and more cables to the living room. And this quote, right here, just says it all. The ultimate measure of success is when the technology is so seamless that it becomes completely invisible. When the experience is so good that your co-op partner has absolutely no idea they're playing a game that's being streamed from a virtual machine in a totally different room. That's the win. So let's be super clear. Is this a replacement for a dedicated console for the average person? No, not really. The path is just too complicated, it's too dependent on your specific hardware, and frankly it's just too temperamental to recommend to anyone who isn't really into the process itself. Because for the tinkerer, for the person who loves doing this stuff, the why was never about replacing a console. It's about the joy of the experiment. It's about taking older hardware and giving it this cool new purpose. It's about learning the deep, complex quirks of how these systems work, and just that quiet satisfaction you get from pulling off a really neat trick. And that really brings us to the end. This whole project just goes to show how a simple goal can send you on this fascinating journey through some really complex tech. And it leaves me wondering, and I'll leave this thought with you. If you had a spare computer just sitting around, what's the wild, unconventional project you'd be tempted to try? Thanks for tuning in.